Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another paddling tip. And in this video, I'm talking about one of the most exciting times of year. This is spring and spring paddling. This is the time if you live in a place like I do that has real winters, this is the time when the ice comes off the river, the days get longer, the sun just feels a bit warmer. It's time to start thinking about paddling. And this video is about paddling tips, around five paddling tips that you should know about spring paddling. So let's dive right into it, starting with number one, which is give your gear some love. Now, you rely on your gear, and your gear relies on you to be maintained, and spring is the right time to maintain it. And there's a few different ways you can do that. First of all, springtime, colder weather, colder water, depending on where you are, it might be very cold water, uh, you're going to be needing your dry wear to stay dry. And so you should be treating your dry wear, whether it's a dry suit, dry top, dry pants, splash top, splash pants, whatever it is, whatever gear is designed to keep you dry, you should be treating it with a waterproofing treatment. Now, waterproofing treatments can be really simple to use. There's a variety out there. I've been using Nick Wax for a decade, maybe more, but there's lots to choose and they're very easy to use and it's well worth it. Another simple way to protect your gear is with 303 protectant and no, they're not a sponsor. This has pretty much been the go-to in the paddling industry for protecting your gear in a variety of ways. Um, for one, it's great for gaskets, the gaskets on your dry suit, dry top, any rubber gaskets, this keeps it flexible, stops it from drying out and cracking, and that's big. The other thing is it's a UV protectant and so, Anything that's going to be hit by sun a lot, it does a great job of protecting it from the sun's harmful rays. I mean, the sun just beats on gear. And, and probably the biggest thing is kayaks. Whether it's a plastic kayak, composite kayak, whatever, this stuff does a great job of protecting your kayak from fading over to from the color from fading and uh, from just getting deteriorating. Composite kayaks, the gel coat tends to crack or the uh, plastic kayaks get brittle over time. So it's a good idea. All you do is spray this stuff on, wipe it down with a rag, and that's it. The next tip for spring paddling is, well, start slow. I mean, you haven't probably paddled for quite some time, and so you shouldn't expect to be able to do what you did at the end of last paddling season. And that's an easy trap to fall into. And the problem with not starting slow and diving right into a big day of paddling is there's a good chance it can lead to overuse injuries. That could just be blisters on your hands, which do suck. <laughs> and they can stop you from paddling for uh, a chunk of time. But even worse, you're looking at tendonitis in the wrist or shoulder or elbow, or just a nastier overuse injury that can knock you out for a good chunk of time. And so you have to lower your expectations for your paddles earlier in the season. Don't try to go as far. Don't try to do the same things that you could at the end of the last season. Work your way up to that. And even better, do some exercises before you get out paddling to get back into real paddling shape. Uh, I do as simple as push-ups. Do push when I know paddling season's about to start, I start doing daily push-ups and I start strengthening the body and getting it ready for, well, for some bigger days. Tip number three is bring an emergency bag or emergency kit. And basically all that is, is a dry bag with extra gear. Knowing that in the springtime, temperatures can often drop quite a bit uh, at the end of the day. And you have to be ready for those changing conditions if you end up out on the water uh, longer than you expect to be. And so that can mean extra layers, uh, warm layers, tops and bottoms, uh, hats, um, gloves, anything that will just keep you warm on the water. Now, if you're gonna be traveling a little bit further from shore, and a good way to actually if you're going paddling on a trip and 
a storm blows in all of a sudden and you can't get back to, the, to where you started, where your vehicle is, um, and you don't have any other exit point, you have nowhere else to get out and, and get back home, then in that kind of situation, your emergency kit really needs to also bring gear that allow you to survive an unexpected night out on the water, even though that you may have had no intention <laughs> at all, zero, it wasn't on your radar that you're gonna be camping out for the night, but you need to bring uh, some gear that will allow you to survive that. I'm not saying bring gear to make it comfortable, I'm saying bring gear so that you can survive that. And that can be, it really depends on where you are, but you definitely would want some type of fire starter. I've got a, you know, a bunch of just Ziploc bags with gear, a lighter, well, there's a piece of emergency kit right there too, a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Probably the most important emergency to cover. Um, but then I got fire starter in here. And like I said, the, the lighter, the fire starter is no good if you don't have a lighter to go with it. Uh, a knife, zip ties, rope, um, you know, very, simple tools, actually those tools are more designed for repairing some gear if I have a problem uh, out there. Um, what you bring, food, that's another big one, snacks, bring extra food. You really just wanna bring whatever you think could, you can fit in a single bag or bring two bags, who cares? Kayaks have so much space. The worst situation to be in is to be on the water and feel like you have to push through unsafe conditions in order to get back to your vehicle because you don't have a choice. You can't spend a night out. So bring an emergency kit so that A, you can be a bit more comfortable on the water if, it, if things don't go as planned, uh, and B, if you need to, you have the option to spend an unexpected night out on the water. Now here's the easiest way to improve a spring paddling trip. A thermos. Bring a thermos with some something warm to drink and everybody in your group will love you, especially if you do my favorite, and you'll know this is my favorite if you've watched any of my other videos. Bailey's in hot water. Oh yeah. One part Bailey's, maybe eight, 10 parts hot water. It's basically Bailey's tea. Oh man, it is the best on camping trips and, and in the outdoors. And if you bust that out when you're on a cold spring paddling trip, a day of paddling, your friends will love you. But it also, not only will they love you, but it really can change the mood. If things are colder than you're expecting and people are, you know, the, people are a little down in the dumps, having a warm, or even a hot drink, doesn't just warm you up from the inside, but it just changes the mood of the trip. So bring a thermos with something warm to drink. I think it's time for a Bailey's break. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I love that stuff. All right, where was I? So last, but most definitely not least, in fact, this is probably the, the single biggest tip I can give anyone paddling in spring conditions when the water is colder than normal, is you have to dress for immersion. And what that means is you have to dress so that you can handle an unexpected swim. And what that means, well, there isn't just a one size fits all solution. It really depends on how cold is the water not to mention how cold is the air outside. But also, if you do go for an unexpected swim, how long are you gonna be in the water for? And even if you get out, of, are able to get out of the water onto shore somewhere, how long is it until you can get a, find a, warmth, a warm and dry place? And so, uh, if, if it's cold conditions and you get out of the water and you're soaking wet, well, your battle isn't over. You need to get to a warm and dry, get to a position of warmth before uh, the threat of hypothermia isn't there. And so all those conditions really play a big role in how you dress for immersion. Um, so let's just 
talk about it in very, very general terms, starting with the coldest conditions. And, and in the coldest conditions, you really, you really only have two choices. You have to either uh, use a wetsuit or a dry suit. Now this is a Farmer John wetsuit. Uh, it's just really kind of the bottom piece of the wetsuit. So this on its own won't do the trick, but uh, you'll have to wear a wetsuit top with this. Now the benefit of a wetsuit is for one, it's cheaper than a dry suit. Number two, it's cheaper than a dry suit. And number three, it's cheaper than a dry suit. Other than that, there aren't too many benefits of a wetsuit. It does the trick though. A wetsuit, I'm not saying it's not a great option. A wetsuit is a great option for paddling in cold conditions. The way a wetsuit works is that it actually, the neoprene, it insulates you. But when it's wet, it actually holds a thin layer of water between you and the neoprene itself. And that thin layer of water, your body warms up and then it stays warm. And so in order for a wetsuit to work effectively, uh, the, the most effectively, the wetsuit needs to be not snug fitting, but form fitting. It can't be too big. If it's too big, you're losing a lot of the insulating benefits of the wetsuit. Now, wetsuits work. You see surfers in the ocean, freezing cold ocean, use full one piece wetsuits with hoods built in all the time. And they're very active in surfing. So it's not that they, they're not good options, but they're not as nice as a dry suit for paddling. Uh, and the reason for that is dry suits keep you completely dry. Whereas to wear a wetsuit is to be wet. A dry suit keeps you dry because it's got gaskets. These rubber neck, wrist, and sometimes ankle gaskets. And these gaskets provide a waterproof seal around your neck, wrist, and ankles. The suit itself is made from a waterproof, breathable material that uh, lets you pretty much wear your street clothes if you wanted to underneath and stay dry. Now you're not gonna do that. It's definitely not gonna do that. It's definitely not gonna do that for spring paddling. Now the job of the dry suit is to stop your body from getting wet, but it doesn't provide any insulation. It, it protects you from wind as well, but, but it doesn't provide insulation. And so underneath the dry suit, you have to wear layers that are gonna actually insulate, insulate you. And that depends on, once again, how cold is it? Uh, that, for that reason, you wanna wear different layers uh, underneath the dry suit so you can change layers if you need to. Instead of one big, heavy, like, fleece jacket underneath there, wear a couple of different layers instead. I use a thin layer, uh, polypropylene, or actually it's a merino wool, nice thin base layer on the top and bottom. And then I put a second layer, which is a thicker layer, a fleece layer over top and depending on how cold it is, that second layer will be thicker or thinner. And the joy of, of doing that is that they're both wicking uh, fabrics. So even, it's not even the water that gets in, it's, hey, if I'm working hard and I'm sweating, I need to get that sweat away from the body. And that under layer, that merino wool, pulls that, that moisture from the body as does the fleece, it pulls it right away from the body. And, uh, and then the material is breathable, so it does escape from here as well. This is the ultimate protection against the cold, but you pay a pretty penny for a dry suit. And so it's one of those things that, you know, if you're gonna be spending a lot of time paddling in colder conditions, definitely worth it. If you're not, you may wanna wait until it gets warmer out or find a buddy that has one that you can borrow. Now on your feet, my go-to for cold conditions has been the NRS Boundary Boot for well over a decade, and it's still what I use. It's a wetsuit boot that, unlike a, a wet suit, it actually, it's waterproof unless you step into water higher than the cuff and water can get inside, but water isn't gonna get through the side of the boot. It's warm and the joy of wearing this wetsuit boot over a dry suit that has feet in it, this is the feet, is these feet are waterproof too. And so I can wear socks inside 
my dry suit and then put my socked feet that are waterproofed into the wetsuit boot. So even if I do step into deep water, go for a swim, my feet aren't actually gonna get wet at all. They're inside the dry suit. I've got the extra insulating layer of my socks and the wetsuit boot, that makes for toasty feet. One thing I would tell you is that if you are gonna buy a boundary boot or a wetsuit boot and wear it with your dry suit with socks in it, get a, a wetsuit boot that's a big, bit bigger than you would normally, maybe a half size, even a full size bigger than normal because uh, if your foot's too tight in that boot after you put a sock and, and the dry suit material, then it'll cut off circulation and actually make your feet colder. You wanna have enough room in there so you can fit the sock and dry suit, boot, uh, dry suit material in there very comfortably. Now, when it comes to keeping your hands warm, there's a few choices. There's wetsuit mitts, there are wetsuit gloves, uh, and you can get them both in a variety of styles and thicknesses, depending on how cold the weather is. Uh, and then this is one of my favorite. These are pogies. And the way pogies work is you put these on your paddle. They kind of Velcro over top your paddle. So they're attached to your paddle and then you just slide your hand into them and then you grab hold of your paddle. And the joy of that is that you've got direct contact with your paddle. And so I really like these for a paddling when performance is, is of the utmost importance, whether I'm whitewater paddling or paddling in surf, really paddling in rough conditions. I like it at all times because my hands don't really get that cold. But I did learn a limitation of these just recently. Earlier, at the beginning of the winter, I did a multi-day trip by myself. And you may have seen this video, but long story short, my boat floated away while I was taking a break and I had to go swim after it. And I had a dry suit on because the water was freezing. The air temperature was below freezing. It was really cold out. Uh, thank God I had my dry suit on because that made a really uncomfortable experience, um, not a really, really, really dangerous experience. But I was using pogies on that trip. And so I swam with bare hands and I could not believe, I was in the water for only about a minute, minute and a half, but my hands were numb and useless. I literally, I couldn't do anything for a while until they warmed up. And it was a, it was a bit of a wake up call that yes, when I'm paddling, pogies is what I prefer, but you can't always gear up based on what's the most comfortable in the best situation. You have to plan for the worst uh, scenario, worst case scenario, which is going for an extended swim or going for a swim. And hopefully it's not an extended swim, but whatever situation you're in, you have to be prepared for that. And so that was a wake, wake up call for me. Next time I'm paddling in really cold conditions, I likely won't be wearing pogies. I'll be wearing uh, something that will allow me to manage a swim much better. Now, when the conditions aren't as cold, they're just cool. You still need to dress uh, for immersion. You still need to dress in a way that'll let you maybe not comfortably <laughs> survive a swim, but survive the swim. And that may not mean a wetsuit or a dry suit. You may get away with lesser cold weather gear. And there's lots to choose from. There's paddling tops, just splash tops without gaskets that they don't provide a seal. So your water's still gonna get in, but you really, you're, they're a shell, like a raincoat that's stopping the splashing. It's, it's stopping the wind from biting at you. But if the water isn't cold enough so that you need a dry suit, that can be fine, along with layers that handle uh, moisture underneath. And when I say layers that, that deal well with moisture, uh, you need layers that wick moisture from the body, as I described before, and that still insulate when they're wet. And that's why the number one rule, regardless of when you're paddling, is no cotton on the water because cotton does not insulate once it's wet. In fact, it does the opposite. It tends to draw heat 
from your body. Um, and so on really hot days, wearing a cotton t-shirt and having a wet cotton t-shirt isn't a bad idea. It will actually keep you, it'll help cool you, can help cool you down and protect you from the sun. But that's a different story. We're not talking about hot, paddling on hot days. In cold conditions or in cool water, cool conditions, cool water, springtime, uh, no cotton, just no cotton whatsoever. I will often wear a, this is a NRS's Hydro Skin and they make tops and bottoms out of this. It's like a wetsuit material with a cozy liner, almost fleecy inside of it. It acts like a wetsuit. It insulates very well when it's wet, but also insulates when it's dry and it's comfortable when it's both wet and dry. Uh, you, you'll, I'll use this, I'll use different layers of fleece. I've got a lot of different layers to choose from that I've collected over the years. The great thing about these layers is they do last for a long time if you take care of them. Now for your feet, booties are great option. These aren't full wetsuit boots that I was pointing out before. These are just wetsuit booties. Same idea. They're neoprene. They're designed to insulate wh whether they're dry or they're wet. Uh, and I'll use these right to the point where it's too hot to use them. If you're one of those people whose hands get cold, well, there's gloves. They're really, these are some light gloves that you can use to just take the edge off those cold days. Uh, I'll sometimes wear them on, on long days, but um, more often than not, I don't go to gloves until it, unless it's quite cold, just because my hands don't get that cold. Like right now, it's getting later in the day, the sun is dropping and it's cooling down, but I'm still okay, but I won't be okay for long because it's gonna be dropping below zero or below freezing tonight. So I'm gonna end this video right now. I hope this video has been, been helpful and provide a little bit of insight and maybe even a little bit of safety for this new paddling season. Uh, the reality of spring paddling is you do have to have the right gear. If you're gonna pa be paddling in cold conditions, in cold water, you need to invest in the gear. If you don't do that, you shouldn't be on the water because hypothermia is a real issue. It can sneak up on you. I had that wake up call last uh, in December when I went for that paddle and had to swim in my dry suit with the right gear. If I wasn't in the right gear, it would have been a very different story. And uh, I'm not sure if I'd be here to tell that story. So gear up, make conservative decisions in the spring. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and stay tuned because I I got lots more of everything coming this year. Tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures.